Well, here is my Astron RS35M. But unfortunately right now, it's working perfect. I don't get it. I have 125 volts AC going into it. I'll crank it up a little bit. 130, 135, 140, 145. It's regulating at 13.89 volts right now. It's working absolutely perfect. But let's just go ahead and pop some new transistors into this because I suspect one of them might be kind of flaky. So what happens is when you turn this thing on after it's been sitting for a period of either days or weeks, normally every single time you power it up, it goes above 16 volts. And there's a big SCR in here that acts as overcurrent protection and it basically shorts the positive and negative together to protect whatever you've got connected to this so it doesn't do any damage. So let's just go ahead and pop some transistors into it. Um, I'll do the same thing as on the last one. I'll go ahead and unsolder that lead number four, the base drive, and just see if we get any voltage whatsoever. And we'll go ahead and test the four output transistors. Now this one has a little bit of a modification. It does have a separate switch right here and that turns on a fan. You can hear the fan running right there. Now I do have a thermal sensor in this unit also connected to the heat sink that I got as replacement parts when I did a lot of Texas Star amplifier repairs and it triggers at 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So it closes the contacts at 115. So that way the fan will start and stop automatically as it heats up and cools down. So let's take a look at the back real quick. Okay, so here is the back view. And if you notice, it has the original Motorola Astron 2N3771 transistors in it. I don't think I've ever taken these out of this unit, ever. But if you notice the texture of these three transistors right here, it is different than the texture of this one. Something is different about this one. I'm not sure what's going on, but the case definitely has a lot more ripple to it. I'm not sure if that might be a defect or they didn't tighten the screws at the factory or what, but there is the fan that I added to the unit. Once again, it is controlled by a thermal switch, a snap disc that operates at 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And I got those from Texas Star. They use those in the, I think it's the, if you get the fan kit for the Sweet 16 amplifier, I think it uh, already has a thermal switch built into it. And you'd have to plug the plug in, I don't remember. I have a Sweet 16 in the garage. I'll have to go look at it and find out. But anyhow, I ordered like 40 of these things because they're extremely useful. I use them in my stereo receivers and whatnot when I want the fans to switch on just over 100 degrees, which is a great temperature to have the fan come on. Let's go ahead and jump into this thing and see what it looks like inside. So I did purchase this unit brand spanking new, and I did purchase it from EGE in Woodbridge, Virginia, shortly after I got my ham license, along with my Yesu FT757 that I still have. So anyhow, let's pop this unit open and look inside and see what might be going on. We'll go ahead and unsolder that lead number four to the base drive and just see if we get any voltage whatsoever. And that'll tell us if we have a leaky transistor or what. Okay, so here is the inside view of the 35 amp power supply. And as you can see, this one has two big beefy 32,000 microfarad 25 volt capacitors. The other 20 amp only had one capacitor. You can see the isolation diode that I added, just like in the 20 amp power supply. And then here is the thermal switch, 115 degrees mounted to the heat sink back there. There is the diode that I added to the other one. It's just in a different location, but it's still in the same place between pin two right here. And it goes over to the collector of this driver transistor Q1 on the printed circuit board. I see that both of my meters have cracks in them for some reason. I'm not sure what happened there, probably just age. There are the two rectifier diodes mounted to the bottom of the chassis. And then back under here, you really can't see it, but there is the SCR that actually crowbars the output if it rises above about 16 volts. So anyhow, let's go ahead and disconnect pin number four right here, and we'll see if we get any voltage on the output with that pin disconnected. All right, we have pin four disconnected. That is the base drive of the output transistors. So I have pin four disconnected. This trace right here does not actually exist because that is the power supply for the UA or LM723, the voltage regulator IC. So yeah, you don't, you don't want that connected to the base of the transistors. So anyhow, I went ahead and removed pin four. 
which is the base drive from the TIP. I think it's a 28 or 29, kind of hard to tell on the schematic, but that eliminates the base drive from these four 2N 3771 transistors. So let's go ahead and power it up and see if we get any voltage on the output. If the transistors are good, we should get 0.00, .00 volts on the output. Okay, here we go. Power on at about 85 volts. And up to 125 volts, I see 0 0.29, 0 0.3, and it is climbing. That is interesting. The voltage is climbing. Well, I think I'm just going to go ahead and slap four new output transistors into this unit and just see if it continues on its journey or if it makes a change. Well, they certainly didn't believe in using excess heat sink compound. They were trying to save that stuff like it was gold. Trust me, when it goes back in, it'll have more than enough heat sink compound. Well, let's go ahead and test all of the old output transistors. And I'll configure them so they are base collector emitter. The same on all four. That one has a beta of 271. Wow, that thing is really sensitive. And a forward voltage of 0.493 volts. That seems just a little bit low. Let's test the other three. That one has a beta of 260 and a forward voltage of 0.490. That still seems low. Something's off here. That should be about 0.65 volts. And I would expect a beta gain of about 40 or 50. So that one has a gain of 118 and a four voltage of 473 or 0.47 volts. A little bit closer to what I would expect. And 241 at 0.489 volts. Something's just off here. Let's go and test the new ones and see if they're closely matched. I think they are. I matched them about a year ago, but we'll go ahead and give it a test nonetheless. That's more like I would expect to see. A beta gain of 48 and a forward voltage of 0.567 volts. So that's one. I already have this one marked as 48 because I tested it like a year ago, like I said. 50 on this one. I tested it and it tested 49 a year ago, but the, the numbers look very good to me. I'm very happy with that. 50 again, absolutely perfect. Even though I had it marked at 48, I think 50 is going to be close enough. And 48 on that one. So I'm very happy on all four of these transistors. Now these are not 2N3771s. They are 2N3772s. And from what I understand, it has a higher voltage, which is not going to play a part whatsoever in this application, but we're still going to go ahead and throw those in. So let's go ahead and clean the mica insulators first, add some fresh heat sink compound, put these things in and just see if it powers up. Once again, I am using the Super Lube Silicon Heat Sink Compound Dielectric. So far, not disappointed. Seems pretty good.
All right, new transistors are mounted. I do like the excess compound that's squeezed out under the mica and under the transistor. I'm confident I have a very good heat sinking to the heat sink right now from the transistor. So next thing, let's go ahead and fire it up. We'll leave that base drive lead disconnected and see what we get. All right, here we go. Let's fire this thing up. The base drive is still disconnected. I've got 120 volts going into it. And once again, it is slowly rising, but it is slowing down. And it's almost stopped at 0.52 volts. Will it make it? Yes, it did. 0.53. Let's put it back in auto range. I mean, it's kind of holding at 0.533 volts, 0.534. That's half a volt. Not that bad. Well, I guess time will tell if this actually repaired the problem. Did it have a bad pass transistor, a bad output transistor? Or does it have a different problem somewhere else? I'm going to go ahead and let this thing discharge the main filter caps as well as the LM723 filter caps. We'll attach that lead number four and see if this thing fires up correctly. Well, it's amazing to me that they never actually cleaned this board when it left the factory. But now it's spick and span. Looks like it should have looked when it left the factory. Well, let's go ahead and fire it up and see what happens. All right, all back together. I've got my meter set up on min-max. So let's go ahead and power this thing up. I do have 125 volts AC going into it right now. And let's just see what the peak voltage is that it outputs and then what the normal voltage is. Let's see if it goes above 13.8 or extremely 13.9. Here we go, power on. 13.90 was the peak. Take it out of min-max, 13.89 is what it's outputting right now. Let's crank this up to 145 volts AC, 13.89. Let's drop it down to about 70. It should start dropping out shortly, there it is. So at about 75 volts, it regulates at 13.89 volts all the way up to 145 volts. That's with no load. With the load, obviously it's gonna pull the power supply down even farther. So you want this thing to perform with no load whenever possible. Anyhow, we'll just have to see how it goes on the Astron RS35M power supply. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the possible repair on this unit. It might be successful. It might be a failure. I don't know. I'll keep powering this thing off day by day and we'll see what it does. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job, and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.